Tillian has one of the most recognizable vocals in the genre, and in this clip, Chris goes over a chorus effect he and Tillian created for previous Dance Gavin dance records. Enjoy. Let's go check out some of these global effects that are going on the whole song. Let's go back to this chorus part. Another thing you'll notice about this song is the first chorus doesn't even have harmonies. Do any of the choruses even have harmonies? It's a very interesting composition. It's because there's multiple melodies happening in the chorus. So he chose not to do harmonies in the chorus. And then the verses have a lot of layers and the bridge has a lot of harmony layers. Um, I love it. It's just a really cool way to approach the composition. So let's check out these effects. So that's just the dry vocal with the EQ and the compression and stuff. First thing I've got on here is a doubler. Good old, uh, oh, you know what? So yesterday I was using Waves Doubler, which I use a lot, but on this one, uh, during the mixing of the last Dance Gavin Dance record, me and Tillian went back and forth until we found a really cool uh, kind of distorted chorus -y effect that you'll hear on a lot of those Dance Gavin Dance songs. And we decided to incorporate that doubling effect subtly into all these songs too, because it's kind of like Tillian's identity and sound right now. And that's something we want to go for. So I actually used micro shift and then the distortion from CQ in an effects rack. And I'll show you how that sounds. It almost creates kind of like an 80s short room sound. It's kind of subtle on this song. Don't run away. Oh, stay with me. I'll care for. Did you hear how that Don't run away. It really adds some character and some identity to the vocal sound in this song? But it's kind of dropped down. But once you get all the vocals going through that, you can definitely hear it. I can play you that by itself, too. So it's essentially just a micro shifting chorus with a distortion before it, a light distortion. And the next thing that's happening all the time is the vocal reverb which is good old pro r Don't run away. Oh, stay with me I'll care for you Don't run away. Oh. I love fab filter plugins they're great um something I mean, I think it's funny. I end up using the factory default on this so much with just like minor changes. But I have the vote, as you can hear, I have the vocal verb pretty low on this song because you're getting that live room vocal slap back too a little bit. And it's not even a slap back, just that little tail. So I using this reverb at a really low volume to just add to the tail that's already there instead of like trying to add a reverb on top of it or something that just surrounds the vocal. Uh, I really wanted to use the reverb just to add a little bit of extra tail when um, when it's missing. And let's see, yeah, that has automation on it. Looks like I'm bringing that reverb up probably. No, I'm taking it out in parts of this song. Where did... So I'm bringing it even lower at certain points. So the reverb is not a huge factor on this song. Sometimes a vocal reverb makes a song, and that's the vibe. But on this song, it's really not doing a lot. Um, I think the delays are doing a lot more than the reverbs in general. Let's take a look at what both delays are doing, all three delays. So you can actually hear in this song that the, de the delay is acting more like a big lush reverb than the reverb itself, which sometimes is the way to go. 
And I'm just using some pretty basic settings in Echo Boy for this. It's a quarter note. Feedback isn't even super long. I'm cutting a lot of low end. I think I'm cutting the low end all the way up to 1K and then just a little bit of high end around 13 hertz. Fully wet using the basic settings here, not changing the groove or anything. And it is a single echo that's locked into the tempo, which is 168 BPM. So it's just a kind of a washed out quarter note, mid rangey quarter note. makes it spacey and it makes it feel slower than it is i like it um let's go back here to this vocal bus and it looks like the only one i'm automating on and off is delay two i might not have even used delay three did i use it on this one no nope. um so let's hear what delay two is doing sometimes i bring in delays like this delay three track is there even anything on it no there's not even anything on it i must have taken it off um but a lot of times i'll just add in some extra delays just so i have options so i don't have to like make the track and do all that stuff later if i'm like ooh, this needs something else i already have the plugins up in the track and i can just turn on the send to it and, and start messing with it um, so that's what that was there's no actual third delay so the second delay is on this part let's hear what it's doing So this one's a half note. And this makes this part feel slower and more, even more spaced out than the other parts. I am never leaving until you stop breathing. I know, clashes when it's unity volume like that, but when it's in the background. it actually adds a rhythm to the vocal part when it's not there I am never leaving. you don't feel the rhythm as hard so let's hear that by itself I am never just kind of lo-fied what i'm using echo farm and then i've got an eq Something I find, I've never found a delay plugin where I really loved the lo-fi setting. I mean, uh, there's some, Echo Boy has some cool sounds and I use them for some things, but generally, I remember forever I would just be like, oh, I've got to try 50 different delay plugins to find the right lo-fi sound or the right this or that sound. And then I was like, why don't I just EQ the delay? Um, and so the, the easiest thing to do, what I've done here is just done a band pass on either side and found the EQ points where I want the lo-fi E sound to sit. Here's without it. Here's just the delay, actually. Pretty basic. It's just a delay with a chorus on it. Um, but then you add the lo-fi, the band passing on Pro-Q. And it sounds radio-y and it's cool, but it's a little bit blunt. So then I also added our favorite or second favorite GUI plugin, Valhalla Vintage Verb in concert hall mode, 1970s color, Trailblazers City Jersey. Now it sounds way more... Uh, ethereal, um, spatial, cool background and not so blunt and dry. Um, it just sounds like this floaty big vocal happening back behind the real vocal. I am never leaving until you... And I also used that effect as a throw in this uh, second verse. Oops. Solos. Calibrate, calibrate your soul. Not sorry. Gonna make, gonna make you whole. 
Anytime now, baby, this day's a little different. So what I did on this part, you can see that I've just turned on, this is the automation lane for the mute on uh, the main vocal bus going to uh, vocal delay two. So it only turns on when this is up then it only turns on for certain words. So the delay doesn't get too muddy, but I'm just filling all the gaps. See, this is all, I want the delay to happen there. I want the delay to happen there. And I want the delay to happen there. Break, calibrate your soul. Not sorry. Gonna make, gonna make you whole. Anytime now. Baby, this day's a little different. And it's not supposed to stick out or be super obvious, but when you hear that in the mix, it's just filling those gaps. There's no dead space vocally. And, and the other thing that I'm doing is that this, remember this quarter note delay is going the whole time. So in order to not muddy up the half note delay throw, every time the half note delay comes in, I've turned down the normal quarter note delay. So they kind of trade places with the automation there. Any other places where I use that half time? I think this is a similar part. Yeah, so this part, I've actually turned the vocal verb way up. Um, I've turned both delays way up. And then I'm keeping those centered because they're actually post fader um, sends. So the delay is always centered or like stereo, but it's not panning. And then the um, delay is always centered. It's not panning, but the dry vocal is panning on that part. As you can see here. That's my pan automation. So it creates kind of a Doppler effect as it goes to the left. Uh, you're still hearing you're you're hearing the louder, clean vocal in the left, but then all that's left over in the right channel is the uh, delay and the reverb and the and the spatial stuff. And then as it switches, the the perspective kind of switches. So it's not just a panning vocal; it's more of a Doppler type vocal effect which is a great way to soften up a panning vocal if it's too obvious. And I wanted this to not be obvious. I wanted it to be more spacey and Dopplery and less, uh, you know, just goofy panning. That's my interpretive dance, um, world's slowest interpretive dance. But yeah, that's that's kind of the deal behind that effect. <laughs> 